Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, this Bible study, I've kind of covered some of this material before, but perhaps this is a different angle. This is going to be on deception. Sometimes the Lord does the deception. Other times it's, well, the devil, right? But in Jeremiah 29, verse 13, we read, And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. When you're looking for the Lord hard enough, you'll find him. So a lot of this has, that I'm going to cover, is going to reference those that uh, they just want a get out of hell card, I guess you could say. You ever seen Monopoly where they had um, a get out of jail card? Yeah. So... Let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. Well, guess what, people? Right now, the USSA, the UK, and the EU are under the curse. Why? For disobedience. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the cursed, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord, and shalt obey his voice according to all all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the utter outmost I'm sorry, if any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted, uh, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command thee, command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, for his commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? 
Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us, and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh, that means near, but the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land, whither thou goest to possess it. Oh boy, here we go. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away, and worship other gods, and serve them, I denounce you this unto this day, that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. Now, um, in 1 Kings 16.30, the... House of Israel and the House of Judah had separated. Israel's capital was Samaria. Judah's capital was Jerusalem. Israel went into apostasy. They had a king called Ahab. In 1 Kings 16.30, we read, And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were above him, uh, before him. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. This guy was bad news bears, people. Bad news. All right, so Ahab is a bad king. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 22. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. <clears throat> now, that right there shows you either the ignorance that the preachers don't know anything, or their lying deception uh, you know, they'll tell you that the Jews and Israel is the same people. They're, they're the same, you know. That's what they tell you. But here it is. You got the king of Judah going down to the king of Israel. So, obviously, they're not the same. If they got different kings, they're not the same. So, bring this up in a Bible study at your Baptist church and uh, watch... Start asking questions and watch how quick you're asked to leave. All right, so, verse 3. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? And he, Ahab, and he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead and Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel I am as thou art my people as thy people and my horses as thy horses in other words hey we're we're the same we're the same people sure I'll go with you Ahab now Jehoshaphat was a good king whereas Ahab well 
bad news bears, right? So instead of reading the book of Kings, let's go to Second Chronicles, which is a companion verse for this. Uh, chapter 18. Second Chronicles chapter 18. It covers the same material. Uh, Kings and Chronicles are parallel accounts. Just like Matthew, Mark, Luke cover some similar material. All right. Uh, Second Chronicles 18, verse 1. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. So he was yoking himself with unbelievers. I'm an expert on that. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria, and Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people he had with him, and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. Now, you didn't know that unless you read uh, the uh, parallel account in Kings, you didn't know that the Syrians had uh, were in charge of this area that belonged to Israel. Um, verse 3, And Ahab king of Israel said unto Josaphat king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people. I will be with thee in the war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. See, Jehoshaphat wanted to inquire of the Lord. Ahab was inquiring of the devil. Big difference. Therefore the king of Israel, the bad guy, gathered together of prophets 400 men and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? In other words, should I do it or not? And they said, now these are the 400 prophets of the bad guy. Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. And Jehoshaphat must have smelled a rat because he says, uh, listen to this, verse 6. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. <laughs> That's right. You hate the prophet of the Lord, and you hate the Lord that sent the prophet. That's right. You hate him. There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same as Micaiah, the son of Imiah. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imiah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either on them on his throne, clothed in their robes, and they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. Now, if these people belong to Ahab, the bad news bears, you know they're bad prophets. They're false prophets. And Jehoshaphat, like I say, he smelled a rat. And he says, oh, wait a minute. Isn't there somebody else we could talk to here? You know. Verse 10. And Zedekiah, the son of Chinena, Chinena had made him horns of iron and said, Thus saith the Lord, With these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, 
Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? In other words, shall we go or not? And he said, Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. I'm sure he said this in an extremely sarcastic voice. You know, because listen to the next verse. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee? In other words, uh, adjure, you know, you know, swear to tell the truth. How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, The king of Israel, bad news bears, said to Jehoshaphat, the good king, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me but evil? And he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. Now this is the prophet of God speaking. Listen carefully. This is important. Again he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all the host of heaven, the angels, the host of heaven, and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab? The bad news bearer. Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Fall. What do you mean? Trip and fall? No. Fall down dead. Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying after this manner, another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit. A lying spirit. I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. I do not believe that this was an angel of the devil. No, this was an angel of the Lord. And, he, and the Lord was going to let him be a lying spirit in the mouth of the wicked king for his 400 false prophets. Now, therefore, behold, now this is the prophet, the good prophet, the prophet of God speaking to Ahab and Jehoshaphat. Well, Ahab. Verse 22, Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. Then Zedekiah, the son of Chenana, came near and smote Micaiah upon the cheek and said, Which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see on the day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Oh yeah, because guess what? The Assyrians were going to come and take Israel away. And that's probably, he was going to go into the, hide himself, you know. Verse 25. Uh, then the king of Israel said, Take ye Micaiah and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in, in the prison, and feed him with bread of affliction, affliction and with bread, water, I'm sorry, and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I return in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou certainly return in peace, 
Then hath not the Lord spoken by me? And he said, Hearken, all ye people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and will go to the battle, but put thou on thy robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to the battle. So here it is, the king of Judah, the good king of Judah, is going to help this wicked king of Israel. But the king of Israel is going to hide himself, and he's going to have the king of Judah, the good king, have his kingly robes on to make the enemy think that the good king is the bad king. I mean, this is the thanks that these wicked, evil people do. So, now the king of Syria, verse 30, had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. In other words, I want, I want the king of Israel dead. Because let's face it, when your leader's dead, your armies are going to have a problem. Because you've got all the captains and generals arguing over who's going to be in charge. And they don't coordinate. So, verse 31. And it came to pass when the, when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. And the Lord uh, and God moved them to depart from him. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. Verse 33. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the, of the harness. Therefore he said to his chariot man, Turn thine hand, that thou mayest carry me out of the ba uh, host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians uh, until the evening, even, evening, right? And about the time of the sun going down, he died. Just like the prophet Micaiah, the prophet of the Lord, said. Now listen to this. Remember, Jehoshaphat's the good king. The bad king died. The good king is going back home. Second Chronicles 19, verse 1. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer. Now, what's a seer? Somebody that sees the future. Uh, in old times, uh, a prophet was called a seer. That's what they were called. But uh, then they started calling them prophets. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him, Jehoshaphat, the good king of Judah, and said to King Jehoshaphat, Listen carefully. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Good question. I wish somebody would ask this in a Zio church. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Is Jesus Lord? Wow. Therefore is wrath, wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land, and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again through the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim, and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. So, a couple of points here. One, we shouldn't be helping those that hate the Lord. And two, it was the Lord himself 
that sent a lying spirit to deceive wicked King Ahab. Think about that. You know what? Important. And then in verse 5, uh, and he, Jehoshaphat, set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Ju uh, Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Take heed what ye do, for ye judge not for man, but for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. Wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect to persons, nor taking of gifts. That's talking about bribery, people. That's why it's talking about gifts. You know, when the rich person gives a judge a gift, uh, you know, it's bribe. So they can cheat other people. So, did you get that? The Lord himself sent a lying spirit. All right, let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 14. Now, a lot of this material I've covered in other Bible studies, but, um, you know, we get new listeners. Uh, you know, if you click on my name, it'll take you to the home page of YouTube, and you can click on playlists, and I've got entire topics covered. You can study those. Got a lot of material. Uh, so, I remember uh, before we go to Ezekiel chapter 14, uh, when I first came to the Lord, I uh, knew there was a lot of fake stuff. Uh, let's see, I came to the Lord around when I was around 30. But um, the thing was, is when I was a middle school kid, junior high school, um, I believed, but I saw all that fake garbage on television. Uh, you know, all those TV preachers. And a lot of the fake stuff just drove me away. I thought it was all a bunch of garbage. Um, and I guess I, you know, when I got to high school, wanted to live my life of sin, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Well, not much sex, but lots of drugs and rock and roll. But, uh, you know, I fell away. A lot of that was from the uh, TV preachers, like I said. So, when I got to be 30-something, uh, one of the things that really got me was I wanted to never be deceived. And I asked the Lord to not deceive me. And I went on a really deep study of the occult, which is not occult anymore. Um, occult, the word occult means hidden. Well, it's not hidden anymore. It's out in the open. And you got Harry Potter, uh, all the television programs. I mean, it's just, it's out in the open now. But I went delving deeply into the occult and I asked the Lord to give me protection and it's not easy to fool me with that kind of stuff anymore I mean let's face it when you watch television um, for example you've got uh, there was a show on during the 90s called Babylon 5 and then you had Star Trek and basically what they were telling everybody is that you know well, you know, we just all need to get along and respect each other and love each other. But the Bible teaches the exact opposite. It says to be separate and have nothing to do with them. So, you know, that's how that works. So, let's take a look. But that's why I did such a study on the occult, so that when I saw it in the churches, I would know exactly what it was. And... Uh, in that aspect, it's not easy. It's not easy to fool me. I'm not saying I I'm an expert, but uh, I recognize a lot of it. You know, 
whether it's Masonic teachings or, you know, what have you, television, movies, uh, even in so-called churches. So, all right, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 14. Now, remember, these people that are coming to the prophet Ezekiel, they're, they're evil. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols, their idols in their heart, and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. In other words, their sin is, they're going to trip over their own sin. They love they they love the things of evil more than they love the things of God. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? In other words, these wicked people want to come and, and ask me questions. Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. So, you want to worship the devil and then come to the prophet of God? Lord God's going to answer you by the multitude of your devils, basically. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Do you know what it means to be estranged? You know, when a husband and wife separates because they fight all the time, they're estranged. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent, repent, and turn your selves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations for every one of the house of israel and or of the stranger that sojourneth in israel which separateth himself from me and setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me i the lord will answer him by my self and I will set my face against that man I will make him a sign and a proverb and I will cut him off cut him off from the midst of my people and ye shall know that I am the Lord listen carefully and if the prophet be deceived and if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing I the Lord have deceived that prophet and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. Wow, the Lord's going to deceive the prophet. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. That the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, that they may be my people. And I will... And, and I may be their God, saith the Lord God. The word of the Lord came unto me, came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then I will stretch out mine hand upon it, and will break the sta staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. And that's people is getting ready to happen. Uh, verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it. Now remember, Daniel was said, uh, was beloved of the Lord. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver, but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of the beasts, 
Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Or if I bring a sword, war, or if I bring a sword upon that land and say, Sword, go through the land, so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence, a disease, people, or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, but they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beasts and the pestilence, to cut off from it man and beast. Yet behold, therein there shall be left a remnant, a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings, and ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I brought upon it. And they shall comfort you, and ye shall see their ways and their doings, and ye shall know that I have not done it without cause. All that I have done in it, saith the Lord God. God deceives false prophets. All right, let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And this will be it. All right, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Now, they're talking about the resurrection, the rapture, as some people call it. This is the end times. Verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of son be revealed the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast. Okay? Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Now remember, people, if this didn't happen in 70 AD when the Romans destroyed the temple, then it has to be come to the in the future. And I don't think that a Roman, a mere Roman general, proclaimed that he was God. I don't think the Roman emperor would have appreciated a mere general uh, telling his boss that he's God. So it has to be future. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Miracles, people. Verse 10, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not, they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. God's going to send them a strong delusion. They're going to believe a lie. Why? Because they love their sin more than they love the Lord. But we are bound to give thanks always always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, uh, whereunto be called you by our, by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. God 
will can and will deceive people. Keep that in mind. All right, this is uh, Chaplain Bob. All glory, praise, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.